<clears throat> okay, so we are recording now. So welcome everybody and thank you for coming to this new session of the Themeness Seminar course. Um, today we are pleased we ha to have with us uh, Professor Changong Lee. Um, Professor uh, Lee is working at the Department of Mathematical Science in KAIST, Daejeon, South Korea since 2007. And among other, uh, let's say, achievements, uh, he's a, a member from the General Council uh, in the uh, International Association of Computational Mechanics. Okay, um, he's also a member in the editorial board of the Journal of the Korean Mathematical Society and director of Global Institute for Talented Education. Um, today, he's going to introduce us uh, in the latest developments about uh, shape prior metal artifact reduction algorithm for industrial 3D cone beam CD. Um, okay. Professor Lee, when you want. Okay. Okay. Thank you for thank you for introduction. Um, oh. Yeah, my name is Chen Lang Li from KAIST. Uh, this is work with my former postdoc, Su Min Zhen. Now she's in the uh, Massachusetts General Hospital of Harvard University. Okay, this is the content of my talk. And first, I will introduce the what the X-ray CT imaging is, and then I will introduce the image artifacts due to the beam hardening impact. And then I will introduce the uh, metal artifact reduction algorithm, and then I will extend that to the three-dimensional industrial combium CT. And finally, I will give uh, some conclusions. Okay, so first, let me explain what is the X-ray CT. The CT means computer tomography. So the, as you see on the uh, this these pictures, this is a CT machine in the hospital. You can usually see, and that is the one of most widely used tomography imaging technique. It uses X-ray. Okay. So the if you look at the, this this picture in the center, okay. So this uh, green is green object is say human being or industrial some object and uh, uh, here's your the uh, uh, x-ray source and uh, the x-ray comes from that x-ray source uh, parallelly and it arrives that the this plane that is a detector which is called the detector so some x-ray signal is the absorbed in that the object and the remaining one arrives that detector and that is uh, recorded on that the, uh, uh, the detector, okay? And now this is the angle theta and that the uh, object rotates or this X-ray system rotates. Then every theta, you can get the uh, so projected data, okay? Which, which is depending on, depending on angle theta. So as that the objects or the, as the, uh, X-ray system rotates that the, you have a bunch of uh, the projected data. Okay, so from that bunch of projected data, you can reconstruct the internal structure of that uh, sub object or the yeah the human human body. And uh, yeah, this kind of thing is a two D parallel beam CT. And if there is one source of a CT in two-dimensional case, then the signal, the X-ray, goes like uh, like a beam, so uh, the pen beam. So that is called the two-dimensional pen beam CT. And in three-dimensional case, if you see here, the X-ray generate, and here's the object, and now you have a two-dimensional X-ray detector. Then uh, this X-ray goes like a cone. So that is a cone beam CT. It's in the sedimentary case. And also there is another type of CT, which is called helical CT or the uh, um, helical CT or uh, uh, spiral CT. Okay, that is actually two dimensional CT, but the uh, that object uh, rotates and it goes up, okay, or rotates or goes down. Okay, so that is helical CT. Okay. So this is X-ray, yeah, this is actually X-ray imaging. Left picture is X-ray image you can see in the hospital. So you can see 
the spine or uh, the okay the mm, yeah it, the rib okay so uh yeah you can see this kind of x-ray image and uh, you can see the bunch of this x-ray images you construct the internal structure of human body okay that is ct and also industry okay, the using uh, for this kind of three-dimensional object okay you can use x-ray ct for this uh this object then you can see uh internally uh some flow or a detect defect or air bubble okay so the x-ray ct the use the industry to detect such flow bubbles so we say that is uh uh, non-destructive testing and evaluations and also you can uh, we can use this kind of ct image to find uh, some uh something in the uh yeah, the package of travelers in the airport okay let me say about the some mathematics of the x-ray ct image uh, it's really really inverse problems so uh so the quantity to be imaged is just the distribution of attenuation coefficients, f of x. So different material has different attenuation coefficients. So by uh, recovering that attenuation coefficients of the inside of human human body or the object, we can see the internal structures. So the input data is the instant X-ray beam. So we have instant X-ray beam and that x-ray beam okay, go through the object and uh, it is absorbed okay depending on the attenuation coefficient of f of x and now the detect okay measure the remaining x-ray intensity okay so the output is x-ray intensity measured after being attenuated so from those information you recover f of x so this is really, really inverse problems. Okay, now let's see. Uh, this is uh, um, Chef Logan Phantom, and uh, here's uh, the uh, X-ray source, and this red line is a detector. So, uh, yeah. So F of X is attenuation coefficient, but the attenuation coefficient is different according to the energy level of X-ray. So. Along this, along that line, along that line, if you take integration of coefficients, okay, the attenuation of coefficients, then this is called the Radon transform, and uh, here the I zero is the initial uh, X-ray, yeah, yeah, the yeah initial X-ray, X-ray, uh, yeah, the uh, strengths, and uh, this is a final. I set is a final X-ray strength, and uh, Bill Lambert law says that the, the final, the yeah, uh, yeah final X-ray strength is uh, decayed exponentially. Okay, so here's that the Lardon transform is here, and that is that is decayed according to the Bill Lambert law. Okay, so the but in practice. X-ray has multiple energy level. Okay, so in Radon transform, we consider the attenuation coefficients with respect to the single energy, but in reality, we have a multiple energy X-ray. So the measured attenuation intensity is given by that. So we have that the yeah for the angle theta, we have uh, okay measured intensity in terms of uh, in terms of energy, and uh, we take all of that. So this is uh, actual uh, the obtained data, okay? The measured attention coefficient, and the real X-ray data is now divided I set by initial attenuation intensity I zero and take minus logarithm, okay? So if the in single energy case. If you divide by I zero and take logarithms and put the minus sign, then you get this Radon transform. Exact you obtained exact Radon transform. But in this case, you cannot 
get because we have several energy levels. Okay, so now just to assume that we have a single energy level, then we have a very famous projection slice theorem. Okay, this is about the simple relationship between Fourier and the Radon transform. Okay. So this is uh, the pro projection slice theorem. And here, this, uh, yeah, actually capital theta is a little bit uh, the cosine theta, sine theta. So this theta is angle. So the, if you take a Radon transform, this is a projected data, okay, depending on angle theta and the S, actually S is here, okay, yeah, this is, uh, this is angle theta, and in one uh, projected data, S is variable on that uh, single projected data. So here, yeah, the Radon transform is actually the function of theta and S, and take a Fourier transform in terms of S, okay, then that is equal to F hat, actually this is a Fourier, two-dimensional two Fourier transform of F. This is a two-dimensional two Fourier transform F, and the right express that using the polar coordinate, okay? So this projection slice theorem says the, this is, uh, yeah, that, 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 uh, okay. <laughs> this is a, a, a schematic description of that projection slice theorem, okay? We have F, acceleration coefficient, we take Radon transform here, and uh, we take a one-dimensional Fourier transform in terms of S, okay? That is, and here you take a two-dimensional two, two -dimensional Fourier transform and change it to the polar coordinate, then that is equal. That's very famous projection slice theorem, and this gives the inverse of Radon transform, okay? So this gives the inversion of Radon transform. So um, if F is L1 function, and also F is, uh, uh, F belong to the domain of Radon transform, and the Fourier transform, two-dimensional Fourier transform is L1 functions, then now, F is recovered using this formula, okay? So here you have a Radon transform and take a one-dimensional Fourier transform and uh, we have the magnitude of that omega and take inverse Fourier transform, okay? So this is just uh, using previous diagrams, okay? So from the F, we go this line and go back to this line, okay? So this is Radon, we call Radon inversion formula. And here, the, yeah, you can see this is uh, the absolute value of magnitude of omega. So if omega is small, okay, small, and uh, if omega is large, actually this is when you take the inverse Fourier transform, this kind of weight, okay, kind of weight. So this kind of the uh, high pass filters, okay. So, okay, so in, yeah. So in practice, uh, we have multiple energy levels of X-ray and this uh, yeah, slice theorem is about the single energy level X-ray. So in the case of multiple level energy levels, we don't have such a kind of uh, the theorems. So we just use this one. So from the, uh, yeah, from the pentons or, uh, or from the object or from the uh, source. Okay, we, we, we obtained this projected data. Actually, this is projected data. And uh, yeah, sometimes we call this as a sinogram because it uh, consists of uh, the curve like sine curve. So this is sinogram. So this sinogram is obtained by multiple, uh, multiple energy X-ray and we apply the Radon inversion formula just assume, assuming that this is uh, coming from the single energy, uh, single energy X-ray. So we take the inversion. So instead of R, we put P here. This is multiple projected data. Then we obtain this CT images. Okay.
Now, uh, this is a homogeneous polynomial conditions. Uh, yeah, this uh, Medic and the Solomon announced the, uh, the uh, published a paper which says about uh, range theorem for the radon transform. So the if you think radon transform with single energy, okay, with single energy, the range is actually characterized by this homogeneous polynomial conditions. Okay, so this is a sinogram data or projected data and uh, put the S to the N. So N is a non-negative integer. So N moves from zero to infinity. And the, actually this is equal to, equal to that. So F is attenuation coefficients. So this is a uh, relations between sinogram and uh, the, uh, yeah, the attenuation coefficients. So if S equal to zero, S equal to zero, this is just the integration of the sinogram data in terms of S. So we we just take the, yeah, so the in one projected data, this is just the integrals of the projected data. And uh, this N is zero means I equal to zero, I, uh, J equal to zero. So this is just the integral of F, okay? So if you, take all of the uh, si uh, attenuation coefficient that is exactly equal to integral of this sinogram, okay, respect to a certain certain angle zeta, okay? That, that is very trivial case. So the Madich and the Solomon said, set of a sinogram, sinogram space, always satisfy this condition. So this is characterization. Okay, so this is about the single energy case. That means, okay, this is sinogram data from the multiple X-ray, okay, multiple energy X-ray. This does not satisfy that the, uh, this homogeneous polynomial condition. That means this is not in the range of uh, radon transform with single energy, okay? But yeah, even though this is not in the range of the Radon transform, we use Radon inverse formula and we obtain this image. Okay, so from the, yeah, from the object, we obtain multiple energy X-ray uh, data and uh, we uh, take inversion of Radon transform obtained and uh, if this is biological tissues. It consists of biological tissues. Then those two are almost the same. Okay. Now, um, actually, the uh, CT images has uh, lots of uh, artifacts. Um, one of the typical one is beam hardening artifacts, and uh, actually, the beam hardening is uh, yeah. The, this is a physical physical impact, and let me explain. Let me explain a little bit later. And also we have a scattering artifact. This is also a physical artifact. And if the material contains some industrial materials, so say metals or others, then the X-ray is scattered and uh, there is a scattering artifact. Also we have a partial volume effect because the, we make the discrete images. So we have the pixel by pixel images and the one pixel occupies some areas of the physical domain. So that causes partial value effect. And also we have a photon starvation effect. Uh, actually the, if the energy of X-ray, X-ray energy is a low, then the whole X-ray is absorbed in the object, so there is nothing to arrive in the detectors. So that's that's a photon starvation. So since there is nothing in the in 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 some in some part of the detectors, we cannot the uh, yeah the reconstruct uh, recover the recover the internal structures. Also, we have underspelling undersampling effect. Actually, we have we rotate that. Uh, 
uh, object or uh, X-ray system, but that is mathematically, that is continuously uh, we rotate, but uh, in, in actual, in the practical sense, we need to take the discrete value of angles. Okay, so if that the uh, sampling is too small, then we have underspelling uh, phenomenon. So those kind of artifacts uh, causes severe degrade image quality. And here, this the first picture is uh, uh, about the dental pictures, and we have metals in the dental, and that metal causes a severe beam hardening effect, and you can see some streaks around here. And also, this is uh, some uh, yeah, industrial uh, object, and uh, uh, we can see scattering artifact. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, many uh, classifications. So actually, the definition of artifact is a systematic discrepancy between the constructed one and the actual one. And uh, artifacts can be categorized according to the cause and the shape. So cause is the first one is physics based, like beam hardening or scattering. And also there is a uh, artifact caused by patient based so motion artifact or scanner based the scanner has some uh, uh, malfunctioned part then yeah it causes the some uh, uh, artifact or in the case of combium CT uh, at the bottom or top there is a, a combium artifact also and we classify also artifact according to the shape in the so streak artifact, that is a streaking, wing artifact, and the cupping artifact. Actually, cupping artifact is uh, the intensity, uh, the center of the object uh, has low intensities. So it looks like a curve. Okay, that's called a cupping artifact. Okay, let me let me say about the beam hardening artifact. Okay, suppose we have here from the left, we have uh, the um, yeah, the X-ray, and it has multiple energies, and we have the, this kind of circle disk, okay? So the X-ray penetrates this, and in the near the middle line, okay, the, this, this circle, this disk is thick, okay? So lower energy, the X-ray with lower energy is absorbed here, and uh, in the finally, in near the middle line, the remaining one has only is only the high level X-ray, okay. And if you see the top and the row, okay, top, uh, yeah, top portion, top portion and the row portions, okay, almost all X-ray is penetrated. And if you look at this 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 right hand side, there is differences between the X-ray, uh, yeah, the energy of X-ray, okay. So if okay, so so the if you look at the the right right figures, okay, the, this is a, a relative number of X rays according to the X ray energy. So in the middle we have a lot of uh, the X ray X ray protons, and uh, for the high level energy and the low level energy we have a small number of protons. Okay, but after it is absorbed. In the in the subject in the near middle we have only high X-ray energies and the top and the bottoms we have uh, almost the same form of these energies, almost same form of X-ray protons. So the using that the uh, X-ray remain uh, the 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 remain the, the X-ray protons we cannot exactly measure that the uh, the attenuation coefficients. Okay, that's that's called the beam hardening artifact, and uh, and in this case, we say that the intensity of the beam is hardened. Okay, so this is okay shows that the beam hardening okay, artifact, and uh, also yeah. So if you look at this graph, uh, this is iodine. So iodine shows uh, the uh, attenuation coefficient is changing. Okay certainly changes in here as uh, the X-ray energy changing and the uh, uh, skeleton muscles or the uh, biological tissue 
okay, the attrition coefficients changes very slowly okay, here. So this causes also metal artifact. Okay, so yeah. So the this PF is uh, projected data in terms of using the multiple X-ray, multiple energy X-ray, and this is uh, uh, projected data using single uh, X-ray. Okay, so if you subtract these two, then we can see that the, here from the formula, we can see that the this radon transform of derivatives here, derivative of uh, yeah changes of uh, attenuation coefficient. So this is slope is very small, okay, as for the normal tissues of human body, but metallic object this is big. So it causes the uh, metal artifacts. So, yeah. So there is a several researches for uh, reduction of metal artifact, and the the the, the one is uh, the the hardware based approach. So first one is a physical filtration. So we you we we put some filters between subject and the detector. Okay. So yeah, and but the this event. This advantage is we have raw SNR, so the so the image quality become poor. And some also we can use a dual spectrum system. So uh, we don't have the uh, single energy level X-ray system, but we can make the uh, X-ray systems which has some clustered uh, energy levels. So first we have a high energy level system and another is a low energy level system. So we have two times scanning using the dual spectrum systems. So it takes a double okay, cost or a double time okay, to take the CT pictures. And uh, another is a software-based approach. The first one is pre-processing. So that is we transform the multiple energy data to the uh, single energy data, single energy projection data, okay? And it causes inaccurate results and missing information. And finally, we have a post-processing uh, software-based approach. It's, uh, we use segmentation and reprojections. And uh, the disadvantage is uh, we need some very high-level segmentation techniques. Okay, so yeah, this is a uh, uh, shape Logan pentum. So we put the metal here. And if you have a metal, then we can see, and um, we take the projection data and we reconstruct the CT images, then we have this uh, metal artifact, okay? And uh, from this, if you look at these sinograms, okay, this part is uh, the, 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 the uh, area which is affected by metals, so the, one of the very easy thing is uh, we impaint. We use impainting technique to make up the data in these metal affected regions. So we have we generate this kind of things. But the yeah. So how to interpolate or impainting is very important. That's a critical issue. And the first one is very simple linear interpolations or the uh, curvature based interpolations or the oil elastica or the uh, yeah the, the patch okay the using patch patch matching uh, uh, in painting technique can be used but the problem is the result is not in the uh, uh, the uh, that does not satisfies homogeneous polynomial properties. Okay, so from that, yeah, we have uh, we reconstruct the CT image, but you can see still you can see some uh, streaking artifact, and uh, that streaking artifact comes from actually the interface between between the um, metal affected area and the original that the um, uh, sign uh, The standard method in this area is. NMR. NMR is called the normalized metal artifact reduction method. And in order to reduce the, in order to reduce the, uh, the, uh, some result 
from this interface, this MR method uh, normalizes the uh, these uh, uh, yeah these sinogram data and uh, take linear interpolations. Then again, we multiply the sinogram data by normalizing some factors. So that is called uh, normalized metal artifact reduction method, and uh, is very it, it gives the best result, and uh, we see yeah, this 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 the artifact reduced much, but still you can see a little artifact remain. Okay, so now I want to see yeah introduce our algorithms. This is called the SMR algorithms or sinograms. Uh, the algorithms uh, based on sinogram surgery. Okay, the idea is if you look at this sinogram, this white region is metal affected region. So if you take the uh, radon inversion, you can see okay, this, these pictures. So if you see this, uh, uh, this part, except the uh, other than metal area uh, part, then this we uh, this 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 projected data is original, okay. And if you look at this uh, CT data, then uh, except that metal reasons or uh, except the streaking reasons, the 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 other part are the original one. So we uh, use the original data in uh, sinogram, original data in CT images simultaneously or alternatively, we um, yeah we make up this uh, metal affected reasons. Okay, so using that kind of idea, we 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 gonna find the sinogram data which is in the range of radon operators. Okay, so this is the basic idea. So from the input. From the input of a sinogram, we construct the CT data, and uh, we use some kind of thresholdings. We extract the metal, okay, and we reproject the metals, okay, into the radon transport. Then we have this. So this shows that we can find the exact location which is affected by these metals, okay. Then now, since we know that this uh, metal reasons, we consider, we segment some uh, reasons, okay, containing that metals, and we take averages of that uh, reasons, except that metal reasons, and we fill that metal reasons by that averages, okay? And then, again, we, do, we project this data, okay? Since we know that the exact location of that the uh, metal affected reasons here, we take out that portions, okay? And from from that uh, taking, we put that uh, data taken from that the reprojected, okay, sinogram, we put here the that to the original sinogram, okay? So this is called the surgery process, okay? Then, okay, then, we can new sinogram data and we obtain the new new CT images. Okay, so we do that. Uh, yeah, so actually in these pictures, this is very clear. But the uh, yeah, in one iterations, uh, usually uh, it does not give a good result. So we we say yeah. So we iterate the peeling process, the surgery process, and the reconstruction process, and the feeding process again. Okay, so we iterate this. So this is called the MAR algorithms based on surgery. So that is SMR. Okay, so this is now numerical experiment. So we use the two uh, simulated pentons and uh, uh, from this uh, we obtain that the uh, attenuation coefficient of several uh, yeah, the matters depending on depending on the energy levels so using that we we take simulated data so here this is metals and dash this is actually original 
the beta effector free image, and uh, this is uh, obtained from uh, yeah, cyanograms. And uh, using NMR, we have this result. Using SMR, we have this result. So, and we magnified this part. Okay, we can see our result is much much better. Okay, so actually, this this shows the, that it's same results also, and uh, we had some patient data. So this is a CT image from the whole CT image, whole CT body of yeah, CT image is whole body from one uh, patient. So this is the pelvis data, the chest data, the dental data, and uh, we put some uh, metals on this. Uh, yeah, uh, the pelvis, and uh, this is MR result and our result. And here, for the chest, we put the some metals here, and this is MR result and our our result. And if you look at this, our result is very uh, uh gives a very uh, good result. Yeah. So this is dental also. And now let's move to the three dimensional three dimensional industrial field. Okay, so now this is uh, the yeah the X-ray CT machines used in the industrial field. So this is different from the uh, CT machines in yeah CT machines in hospital. Okay, so and uh, from using this uh, yeah industrial CT machines, we obtained this kind of three-dimensional okay object, and the, yeah usually it uses the uh, combined CT. And this is used in uh, flow detections, inspections, and the security checks in uh, uh, airport. Okay, so this is a uh, schematic diagram of uh, Combium City. And uh, now we bring the idea of SMR, okay, our algorithm in 2D, and we extended the 2D three-dimensional three industrial Combium City. And if you recall the, what kind of uh, the algorithm we use in 2D. The first one is uh, around the metals. Okay, we have we extract some area containing the metals, and we take the average average peeling process. Okay, so in two dimensional case, we can easily find that area which contains metal. Okay, but in three dimensional case, um, it's not easy to find the um, the uh, volumes which contains uh, the metals or air bubbles or flows in three-dimensional case because the picture is three dimensions so we cannot easily find that so we need to something to identify the volumes three-dimensional volumes that contain the metal or flow or the uh, flow or the air bubbles in three-dimensional case, okay. So, in the three-dimensional industrial product, we have CAD data, okay. So we're gonna use that CAD data, and uh, by looking at the CAD data, okay, by looking at the CAD data, uh, we try, we we can identify some volumes or the three-dimensional volumes contain that the uh, flow, okay. So, uh. So that is, yeah. So in order to match the CAD data and the CD data, uh, we need to registration process uh, using the shape prior segmentations. So first we have CAD data and the CT image data, and uh, we have registrations. And after that, now we have the three-dimensional uh, model based on cyanogram surgery, okay? So this is exactly the same as a two-dimensional case. So in three-dimensional case, the key thing is how to register the CAD data and the CT images. Okay, so now you use a shape prior segmentation. What is segmentation? Okay, prior, shape prior segmentation. Suppose that we have uh, this kind of images and we want to segment these rectangular regions instead of this whole body. So we have some information. So this is called the shape prior information. So 
using the shape of prior information, we want to extract this part. So this is called the shape of prior segmentation in the yeah, in the image parsing world. And usually we uh, design the certain energy functional using the Leibniz functions, and we minimize that and find it. Okay. So here, okay, we have uh, this is CT data and this is CAD data. Okay, so CT data comes from the reconstructions of CT data from cyanogram. And if you look at the, the these top bottoms, okay, there is some uh, noise here, very severe noise. This is called the Combin City. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is the CT data is just the binary data. So the inside is one and that's our outside is zero. Okay, so yeah, so we have the in the registrations. Okay, in the in the yeah we use a prior uh, shape of prior segmentations and that functionals to do shape of prior segmentation has a lot of uh, local minimums. So it is very hard to find the global minimums. So very important thing is how to choose initial gas. So if we have initial gas very close to the global minimum, then we get the very nice result. So in order to get the uh, good initial gases, we from that the um, uh, yeah, CAD data, we need a volume scale. Actually, this is uh, yeah, this CAD data is too big, right? So we need to take a volume scaling and finding major axis, actually principal axis. We put that the, okay, using the principal axis, we had this CAD data. Okay. So the okay, so in order to have these CAD data, okay, so we have that axis alignment. So first volume scaling. And then axis alignment gives a good initial gas. And then we have a registration solution, shape prior segmentation. Okay, so now how do we the, take that the um, uh, yeah, initial uh, 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 get the axis? Okay, find yeah, the we find the, we find axis alignment. Okay, here we have the matrix I. This is called the inertia tensor. For the 3D volumes, by calculating these inertia tensors, okay, if you find the, this is actually the symmetric matrix. So if you calculate the eigenvalue and the eigenvectors, so the eigen, eigenvalue, eigen, so eigenvector is, eigenvector shows the principal axis of this, this object. So by calculating initial tensors for the uh, CAD data and for the CT images, okay, we have uh, uh, principal axis of two objects and also eigen, eigenvalues of two objects. And if you compare that eigenvalue, scale of eigenvalues, okay, we can find the scaling of the values, okay, and then so using the scaling of volumes, we, we, we scale the CAD data and uh, using the, the transformations to match principal axis of CAD data and the principal axis of CT data, okay, we get that transform, then we get the, we, we can get the axis alignment first. Okay, so, okay, then we have the axis alignment, but the, if a CT image is obtained without the noise, then it should exactly match it. Okay, it should be exactly matched. But CT data contains uh, some noise and artifacts. Okay, so even though we have the uh, two principal axes and we match the two principal axes, the exact shape, two shape is not matched exactly. So in order to now register the two yeah, to CT data and the CAD data, okay, we have this kind of minimization function. This is very famous chain Bezier models. And uh, here, 
Now, instead of just a standard Chambezer model, we put here the, the function Psi. Psi is now, okay, this is uh, the transformed one from a uh, shape prior. Okay, so shape prior is a CAD data, and here this ABC is a translation factor, and uh, here the N and the theta is now the rotation factor. So N1, N2, N3 are rotation axis, and uh, the theta is uh, rotations along their rotation axis. Okay, so we minimize this, and in order to minimize, we can use the gradient descent method, but in this case, uh, uh, that's not easy, okay, because this is too much complicated. So instead of using gradient descent, so that requires derivatives. We just use generic uh, minimization uh, algorithms, which is called the PSO. PSO is a particle swarm optimization algorithms. So this is very heavy, okay, but we can do it. Okay, so uh, in order to reduce the cost of that uh, uh, PSO algorithms, we use two resolution approaches. First, we make a small CT data, small CAD data, and uh, we can make that uh, translation factors, okay? And then we, we, we get the full okay, size uh, data. Okay, so now we have real experiment. So we had aluminum body, okay? We designed that and we have a three leader pole, okay? And we put here and we take the X-ray data. Okay, so this is a given CT, this is a given CAD data, and we aligning of the, the uh, principal axis and the registration process, okay? We match the, these two. And then now we have the result for the correct dictations. So if you look at the here, the, we have an air bubbles, okay? Air bubbles and uh, uh, we have the leader pole here. So due to the leader pole, so due to the metal artifact caused by leader pole, we cannot see anything okay, between two leader pole. And this is a CAD volumes, okay? So using the CAD volumes, we can generate that the um, some three dimensional volumes around that leader pole, okay? And then we use okay, the SMR algorithms iteratively and obtain that. So here you can see okay, something which is not in the, this CAD volumes. So this is uh, L bubbles, okay? So this is uh, actually correct depictions. Okay, so now let me give you some conclusions. We had a review on the artifact and CT images, and we proposed an algorithm to reduce the metal artifact in two-dimensional CT images. We extended it to the three-dimensional combium CT using the prior CAD information, and uh, we showed that proposed algorithm suppressed the artifact and CT images very, very successfully. Okay, so I want to stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Lee, for the presentation. Uh, and thank you for, for keeping uh, the time always in mind. Uh, it was uh, very nice and, and clear. Uh, now we have time for some questions, if any. If anybody wants to ask something. If no, I, I have a couple of curiosities. Uh, OK. You talk about this SMAR algorithm in mm -hmm. 2D and in 3D, and I guess mm -hmm. it's kind of costly, um, but I don't know because I am not an expert in this area. So just to know, for instance, in this last example, um, how much time do you need to uh, to finish this iterative process and to clean this image? Oh, uh, yeah, it takes just uh, one or two seconds, very big. Uh, yeah. so, and what kind of code are you using then? Uh, actually, in okay, so uh, first we tested using the MATLAB, uh -huh. and in MATLAB case, it takes uh, uh, one or two minutes. But okay. the, we use C code, 
and we dramatically reduced the yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> the okay. Yeah. So you you work in C. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, and have you have you developed? Uh, I mean, is this uh, going to be part of a of a pattern of a? Yeah, this is uh, actually we got the uh, Korean patent, and uh, recently we got the United States patent also. Okay. So, are you do you plan to use this, uh, let's say, in a in a consistent uh, manner? Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Okay. Right. That's that's nice. Okay. So maybe I don't know if if anybody other if any other people have questions. The thing is that. In our research center, we are more experts in uh, finite elements, uh, uh -huh, okay. element method. So maybe, and you are more, let's say, uh, you come from a mathematical uh, side of the science. But, but I think it's it's also interesting to have these these mm -hmm. talks, um, and we can learn from from subjects which are not, let's say, our main or our usual uh, field of expertise. So mm -hmm. that's good. Uh, if if nobody else has questions, then we can close the session of the seminar here. Uh, thank you again, Professor Chang Um Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ignacio. Uh, thank you, thank you, very thank much. you. Thank you for the lecture. Thank you for this very nice lecture. Thank you, Genio. Thank you. Okay. So see you in the next uh, session. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Bye.